Hey, parents, friends, welcome to another episode of Beyond Risk and Back. I am your hostess with the mostess, Aaron Huey. I appreciate you being here, and I'm really excited about this show. The moment I saw this guy answering uh, questions that parents of teens who were struggling, uh, I, I knew I had to get him on the show. Uh, on my Facebook page, the private group, Parenting Teens That Struggle, which I'll talk about later in the show, uh, you can imagine that a lot of conversations come up around the, what kids are going through on social media, on the internet, and most importantly, porn. And the fact that there is porn in every pocket. Let me tell you a story. I promise it's appropriate. When I was... 12, 13, 14 years old, I grew up by a field that had giant hay bales. And as kids, we would go and hollow them out. And there was one we could always count on where somebody in the neighborhood, and we never found out who, was putting his dad's Playboys. And that was my first connection to pornography. Now, as a father, as a father of a daughter who came of age during the internet age and was being sent dick pics as a father of a son whose first exposure was way different than Playboy magazines and a hollowed out hay bale. This became concerning and being able to talk to kids about pornography and how to navigate the porn that is in every pocket this is a common frustration of parents. This is a common concern about parents and rightly so. So on my parenting teens that struggle, parents ask about this experience of navigating pornography with kids and what do you do? And Ryan Becker showed up and started answering questions. And this guy had answers that were truly supportive, truly helpful. And he was talking about it from the technical side, how to control the internet in your home. So I reached out to him behind the scenes. He agreed to be on the show. Ryan Becker is an IT consultant and a security specialist for not only small to medium businesses, but also for private people in their own home, how to control the internet and protect your children from pornography. We're going to talk to Ryan Becker today on Beyond Risk and Back. Thanks for joining me, folks. And Ryan, thank you so much for being here, pal. I appreciate you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to be on the show, Aaron. I really appreciate it. Well, yeah, this, is a, this is a tough subject, isn't it? it it's a very so, tough subject. You know, even for me, I'm a parent myself. I have a 12-year-old little girl, and she has devices galore. And I have a stepson who's 13, devices galore. Sure. And, you know, you want them to have the devices, and you want them to learn how to use technology, but it comes with issues, right? Yeah. Yeah. And... You know, it's really frustrating and is to how much control to have over the kids because it's going to cause a fight, right? And it, it, this, uh, that's, that's where I want to start with you, Ryan. Is, so you're a father, you're a stepfather, you've got kids in your own home, you've got devices, technology's not going away. If anything, it's going to become more accessible as our children, as your children grow up. My children are mid-20s yeah, now. I'm in the same boat. Okay. I'm in the same boat myself. So, the other parents in there. Yeah. so let me start with this question. Do you control the internet access in your home and how much? I completely control the internet access in my home. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have a security device that's a that's a version, the same version I would recommend to a home user that controls that on the network. We'll get to that one because and it's it's so easy. It works by a, a mobile app. So this is, so let, let me ask that question second, because when I have parents contact me about the frustrations they're having with technology and their teenagers, we are dealing with Gen Xers who are, and, and potentially even boomers who are still trying to figure this out. Some of us are more savvy than others, but as a 51 year old man, I don't really know how to control the internet access uh, it, other than some of the simple things. So are we dealing is internet control and internet access easier to control than we think, or is it technical, but you can walk us through it. It's actually easier than you think. What I would do is, is, is 
set it up and and make every make it easy for the user to use going forward. Does that mean that if I called yeah. you, you would be like, "All right, Aaron, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this easy for you." Yes. Okay. That's exactly what we would do. Okay. Yeah, and it's a combination of software and and a, and a network device to do it. So now the simplest that I've seen and heard, and I I want you to speak about this one, but the simplest Mm -hmm. control mechanism that I've seen is unplugging the internet and taking the cord to bed with you every night. Well, you know, you could do that, but what if there's another ethernet cable laying around the house? Right. They're sneaky. They're sneaky. But you shouldn't have to do that either. You can shut the whole thing down. Right. Yeah. With the touch of a button. Yeah. You shouldn't have to do that to your, to your own gear. Connection. Is that what hard on the? It, what if you want to use it during the <laughs> videos or something like that? You know, you should be able to do that without them having to shut everything down. Sure. It, to do it. Is that hard on your equipment to unplug it every night? And I'm talking like someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. So I want to ask those questions. Does that? You know, I've I've seen ports on routers go bad because they get jammed in there people do it so often it breaks the port okay i wouldn't rec- necessarily recommend unplugging gear at night like that repeatedly okay so. okay then let let's start with the most basic the most simple uh, changing the password um mm-hmm. i don't know how to do that i had to do it recently here in the office and it was a it was a it was a tough step-by-step process but is that is that the simple one? And then we'll talk about how kids can find their way around oh, it. But to change the Wi-Fi password. Yeah, man, you see, you just said it yourself. What a pain in the butt that would be to do it every night. Yes, on whatever nights over a weekend or whenever. Can you imagine going in like you just said? Wasn't that a pain in the butt? Oh, it was a total pain in the butt. Could you imagine going in and doing that every night? to shut down internet access to your kids <laughs> and reconnecting all and your devices to the new Wi-Fi every night, <laughs> it wouldn't work. Now, the idea behind that is the, the idea that I could say to my kids, hey, you are welcome to have the new password once homework's done and the bathroom's clean. You, you're, you're, I'm happy to share the password with you once the cat boxes are clean. And after you've shown me, um, that, that the backyard's mode, like, like that would be awesome because now oh, you, I, I love, I love how you're trying to make this so difficult. <laughs> you see, here's where the, the software device that goes on the network, the application makes it, Oh, Johnny, you've been bad. All your devices click are shut down. Done. Now, does some company have the monopoly on that singular device, or are there multiple devices uh, that you could buy? There's different pro- there's different brands of product that do the same general thing. But Would- I have one in mind. The products that I use are by our company that's actually headquartered here in uh, Las Colinas, Trend Micro. Trend so- Micro. Trend Micro. I use Trend Micro products. Yep. Okay. And they're down in Las Colinas. They're local. Their North American headquarters are. What's it called? What's what's the app called? So the app is called Trend Micro Net Home Network Security. Okay. That's that's the device, and it is actually a device that connects to your router. Now let's be clear. Now, you, do you work for them? No, I do not work. And I am not sponsored by them. So we are, we are talking about a product that an IT specialist likes. You know, I've been using Trend Micro products uh, for home and business, for my home and business, and my customers' home and business for quite a while, for, since I started my business in 2005. And I've been pretty happy with them. That's oh, I like my girl. now talk us through the different uh, segments of control. What does it mean to control the internet, different devices, things like that? And yeah. can you do what you're talking about without a product like this? So the levels of control are, can a device go out to the internet? Yes or no? Okay. If yes, if it can, what sites, what kinds of sites 
is this device allowed to go to? Okay. Well, you know what? Pornhub.com ain't going to cut it anymore, kids. No, no, no. But I want I want to say something about yeah. this, and I want you to say something about this too. Uh, Reddit. I have found out that a lot of kids are on Reddit. And Reddit is a fun site. It's a popular site. And it's really easy to access porn on Reddit. There are, there are no controls on Reddit. Yeah, you know, you can only do so much. Um, you could, uh, you could block, you could, you could totally block Reddit for a group of devices. It could devices. Okay. Uh, but what if they have a legitimate use to use it? Well, um, you could let them have it, and then the links to the porn and Reddit aren't going to work, probably, at least for that. How? how? I, I don't understand. How can you not yeah. block Reddit, but block what they're finding on Reddit? So the way that the device works is it is a cloud-connected device, and Trend Micro maintains a database of links that are that fit different categories. And in this case, pornography. Okay. So they're pretty good. I've tried to fool them before. They're they're pretty good. They really okay. are. Yeah. Yeah, and it blocks other categories too. Uh, there's several different categories in there, but porn being the biggest concern with our with our teens and tweens. What else are you, are you concerned and what else do you find other parents calling you for and saying, I don't want my kid? You know, the problem, Aaron, is they don't call me enough about this. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, I see it as an issue a lot when I go into homes and I see that they have teens and tweens and I'm working on a computer for various reasons or whatever. And I ask the parents if, if they have any controls and they... They're really kind of, they don't want to talk about it. And it, it, it's an important subject. Um, but parents should be, con- be concerned about what their kids are doing online. Sure. These days. How do you know when your kid, if your kid is erasing their uh, internet history or using, um, oh, what's that? What's that How one? Do you know if they've tried to break the rules. Well, yeah, especially yeah. if they're erasing their history or if they're using, what do you call it? Uh, the, 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 you know, you've got your regular so, Google search and then you got incognito. Right, right. Well, it doesn't matter if they're incognito or not. The device is still going to affect that computer the exact same way, whether it was incognito or not. So it, it, it's based on a network address physical to the computer. Okay. I don't, I don't want to make it too nerdy and go way too deep in, into it, but there is a physical number on every network device and the home network security box identifies which device is which by that number. And so whether it's coming from that same device in normal mode in a browser or incognito mode, it's still coming from that same device. It doesn't care. Yeah. One of the things that parents have told me that their kids do, let's say they, they bust their kids, you know, going on social media, past curfew uh-huh. or accessing porn, they take the phone away, is that either the parents have saved old phones or the kids themselves get an old phone from a friend. Will the device recognize a, a new device? So, so, so what does it do in the case of a kid sneaking in a device. Right? A new device, an old device of someone else's. That is a wonderful question. I love it. This device has network access control, which I have turned on on mine. Okay. So when a, when a guest, another kid usually brings their iPhone over and want to connect to the network, um, <sighs> I, give them the, I pop in the Wi-Fi password, and this device will let it connect to the Wi-Fi but it doesn't let it go anywhere until in the app on my phone, I approve that new device to join the network. So, so if, even if you're not at home and a kid's friend comes over and wants to use the internet, you get dinged and that kid cannot access until you accept. You could be anywhere on earth. As long as you have a connection (laughs) to the internet with your phone, that app will give you a notice, a notification saying that, 
this device wants to join your network and you allow it and assign it to a, a group. So I keep a group in it called guest kids. Yeah. So when kids bring devices over and totally cool. Yeah, sure. Me, because I assign that device to guest kids that has the web filtering for, I think it's uh, 13 and up turn, turned on. And so it blocks pornography in a couple other categories. Yeah, if they're on the Wi-Fi. So conversely to that, this is I've been asked this in, in uh, on Facebook about this device. What happens if a kid takes his phone off the network? Right. He's over at his friend's house. He's not on your network anymore, right? Right. How does this device block it? Well, there's an application that comes with it that goes on your kid's phone. And it extends the exact same rules from the device in the network to the device outside of the network as if it were on the network. So, so your kid goes to a friend's house and wants to look at a, at a site they shouldn't be looking at, or they've agreed not to, and they, their phone blocks it. Exactly. They're not going to do it on that device. Can you get devices this, right? Yeah. Take ownership of your devices, parents. It, it, it's really this application and device are not that hard to use. Yeah, it's new to you. It sure I had to poke around in it too a little bit when I first got it. But if you can help me let you set up in something this or something like it, um, once you move around in it a little bit, you'll see how it works. It's really a pretty intuitive application, and it, it, it it's going to take out the take out the Ethernet cable. God, we're not going to do that anymore. You know, if if my kids, so in this device, every kid we assign, I call them groups because they're groups of devices. So my daughter, Lily, there's a Lily Becker group. There's a Ryan Johnson group. There's a, you know, so you assign the devices to each group and you set the filtering per group. And so I have their smart TVs in their group. Uh, their Echo Dot in their group. Uh, each phone is in their group. So, if you know, if they're being obstinate, really, really, you're gonna you're gonna smart off to daddy that way, huh? Well, I just shut off Lily's devices. <laughs> I'm curious since since you and I are live with each other. I'm curious how long it's gonna take your daughter to come in and be like, Dad. Oh, it's shocking how fast they straighten up. I mean, you know, it's so funny because on their stream, on their smart TVs, she'll be watching something on, on Netflix or Disney Plus. And after she smarted off to me, you know, as soon as I turn it off, it's going to play whatever is left in the cache on that TV and then stop. It's so funny. <laughs> Dad, I'm sorry. I'll do it, I swear. <laughs> So I think there, there's something about what you're saying, Ryan, that, that makes sense to me. And that is you are holding a boundary. You're using technology to hold boundaries with your kids. Exactly. And it's, it, it makes it so consistent. And not only can I shut off my kids' devices as well, I can set schedules also. If, if it's homework time, you set a schedule in that app and it's not going to let their devices do anything. Now, what about them being able to download things on their devices? During homework time. Yeah, yeah, sure. And which is, yeah. again, we're not talking the end of the world here, right? But we are talking about parents being frustrated that their kids are multi-attentioning uh, uh, when they should be yeah. focused on family time, homework, going outside, whatever. You know, the kids, you're like, go outside, and you boot your kid outside, and they sit outside in the back porch staring at their screen when that's, we're like, that's not what I was talking about, <laughs> but... Can you do these devices? Is there a way that once you are giving them access, can you stop downloads? Can you really control the device's total function? Yes, you, you really can at a fairly granular level with this product. Yeah, that can that can absolutely be done. There are other products as well, and I'm I after this conversation, I am gonna call Trend Micro. And okay. I'm 
I'm going to talk to them because I, you, you obviously really love the product. And as a specialist and a consultant, um, me talking about it, you talking about it on the show, I want them to know. And I, I want to ask them, if, is there a way they're willing to come on and, and talk about the product? But to be fair, since we are not being sponsored by anybody or, or financially supported by talking about their product, there's also a product called Bark. I haven't heard of Bark, but there's another one called Circle. And I have used it and what did you like and dislike? I disliked it because it took my network down. <laughs> well, as an IT specialist, that would bum you out. Yeah. And that's actually <laughs> where I found this trend micro home network security product. Okay. Yeah. There's another, there's another product called watchdog. Net gear armor. Watchdog Net makes it makes networking gear. Okay. But, you know, there really are several different ones out there. Um, you know, you know, and shop around. Um, there's, yeah, there are, there's, I'm, I mean, I don't have to work with Trend Micro. If somebody wants to do something different, I'm willing to use it too. And is Trend Micro, is it a, a subscription service? It is a subscription okay. service. So the device itself comes with a one year, a one year subscription. And it's $109.99 for the device in the one year. And I think it's 69 bucks a year after that. Okay. Yeah. And obviously they're gonna they're you know, those costs will, will fluctuate depending yeah, on don't quote me on that. Sure, of course. Now, let's say for the sake of argument, we're working with a family who cannot afford the, you know, the one ninety nine and they need these securities and controls in now. And so they give Ryan Becker a call and Ryan tells them what? Well, without any subscription services, the only way that we would do that is through a Microsoft family account. Okay. If they're running Windows 8, 8.1 and up, so Windows 10. Um, if they're using Windows 10 computers, each kid can have a Microsoft account. Okay. And you, they can actually be set up as a child. I actually have this set up for the kids too. Um, but as far as network control, I use my gadget. I use the trim micro box to do that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so you can actually do it with Windows. Okay. There's actually, there are ways to do it built into Windows. It's uh, not necessarily all managed in one place. So it's kind of per device rather than having an app to handle all devices on the network. Uh, but yeah, there's other ways to do it. You can do it with software too. What about what about Mac and App, uh, Apple products? Is there is there a way you know of to uh, is shut down free range surfing the the interwebs on Mac? I haven't done it, but I've seen Apple has. They do have a they do have a built in product too for families in in their operating system. Okay. It's not doing it that way. Isn't nearly as granular as as uh, using an actual hardware device on your network. What do you mean by granular? Granular meaning being able to select options to your liking. And if those options don't exist, you can't do what you want to do. So the deeper you go in a menu, the more options you have and where you're at. So that's the best way I know to explain that. The whole purpose of this podcast, bringing guests like Ryan Becker on, talking about anything from suicidal ideation in teenagers to internet control to self-harm to depression and anxiety, the whole purpose behind this show is to support families. Running a treatment center means I am on the last line of defense. Right, because at the end of mental health and addiction, there are jails, institutions, and death. And I run an institution for children. And the experience of being that final door before the gates of hell, which is a prison or a mortuary, has made me want to get out front and be a large part of the ounce of prevention, not just that pound of cure. Fire Mountain Residential Treatment Center is a great program. We've won awards. We, we have the highest success rate in the United States that we can find. I have an amazing staff. 
But that's the last hope. And I want Beyond Risk and Back to be the first hope. So in addition to this podcast, I have a free Facebook group called Parenting Teens That Struggle. We just hit our uh, 1,000 member of the secret group marker, which was really awesome because I've done it organically. But that tells me another thing. A lot of parents are looking for support. So if you're listening to Beyond Risk and Back and you need more support, or if someone else you know needs some support with their teenager that struggles, Go to Facebook, go to a private group called Parenting Teens That Struggle. Answer a couple questions and I will meet you there. I am the moderator. I post these shows. I post videos. I post support. People like Ryan Ryan here, my guest, show up as parents answering questions that other parents have. And that's how I met him. So get the support you need, right? Because we talk about on Beyond Risk and Back, take care of yourself first and your adult relationship second. Parenting Teens That Struggle is a place where you can go create and nurture your adult relationships in a support group. These are parents who understand what you're going through. How do I know? Because these are the same parents I've been working with now for 16 years with mental health and recovery. The page is Parenting Teens That Struggle. It's a private group on Facebook. I'm the moderator and I'll see you there. Ryan, how much censorship is too much in your mind? Let's talk about your personal opinions around censoring the internet for children. You know, for me, it's mostly about the pornography. Okay. And you know, they're gonna see it on other devices. You know, there's only so much you can control unless you lock them in their rooms. Right. But you know, I feel like I own those devices and I feel like my teen and tween kids shouldn't be looking at porn on them. And I feel as a responsible parent that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that doesn't happen, at least for the porn. You know, now we talk about social media. Yeah. Yeah. um, God, they're all into it now, aren't they? Yeah. (laughs) It's, it's It's a big deal for them. But, you know, it's how... Social media is part of how we reach out. Um, Social media for me is really important. I found my biological half sister using social media. Wow. Yeah, I I uh, met my biological my my biological mother's family because of social media. Yeah, you know I don't want to prevent my kids from being able to reach out to their friends who are using it. But it's like, okay, now we're letting them use Facebook and TikTok. Oh right. my goodness, TikTok is the thing now. And uh, you don't want to keep them from expressing themselves, but you can't block it if you're going to let them use it. Right. But you can't block what they're going to say or post, can you? Nope. So if you're going to allow them to use social media, they're a minor child using your devices and you're paying for the internet connection, right? I think you should be able to, uh, if you feel a need, take a device and look at their accounts. That would have to be the censorship at the social media level. Ryan, you have said something a few times on the show now that I appreciate, but I want you to say more about. At no time have you called these devices your children's devices. You, That's correct. You say they're yours. They are mine. <laughs> I give them the privilege of using the devices. I'm making the payments on Lily's new phone right now. <laughs> I bought her the tablet. I bought her the laptop. I bought her the computer. And they are privileged devices. They are. They truly are. Um, you know, I don't have to shut the kids down all that often. But I'll tell you what, it, it's like having a big bat. I only have to move my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's you know, with these kids these days, it's the most effective bat too, because, oh my God, it, it's like a coffee shop being out of coffee if they don't have connectivity. Right. It straightens them up real quick, I promise. And it doesn't, it usually doesn't cause a big fight. Um, you know, it's just easy and you can make it consistent with schedules. 
So you're definitely okay embracing technology, getting your kids to embrace technology, but you don't seem to be playing into the anarchy and allowing your children access to the anarchy of information and imagery that out there. We, I did a show recently about <laughs> internet dependency in children, and my guest, who was an expert and a therapist, said 30% of internet traffic, 30% is pornography. Now that means, Ryan, wow. that the other 70% is shared by businesses, social media, uh, uh, live streaming. Those are ma social media, business use of computer and internet, and uh, live streaming of movies is a massive amount. And they all have to share the leftover 70%, that and everything else. And to top it off, if we don't understand... One of the driving forces and purposes of the internet. All we need to do is remember the very first image that was sent online, person to person, was a topless woman. The very first image after the creation of the internet was a topless woman. So we're dealing with information and pornographic anarchy, and every child has access to it. They do. And, and, you know, ultimately, no matter what you do, there's going, they seem to find a way, whether it could not be on your devices or it comes in through a website that wasn't blocked, you know, but we can put a pretty big consistent filter on things and cut out the vast majority of it, at least make it real difficult for them, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, I really do kind of play by the theory that they're my devices. I'm not going to allow you to use them. And should I not allow you to use it, I'm not going to make a big fight. You come take your computer. I'm just going to not let you have connectivity to the internet for however long I choose. <laughs> you know? Even if you have everything blocked and the kid's trying to break through, can you, mm -hmm. can you see that? Can you find that out? Do you get alerts that they're trying to access stuff you've blocked? So if they if they try to access a pornographic website, if you have the filters turned on on yeah. the devices, um, there's an option in the, in the app where you can you can if you want to get alerts. One say, uh, Johnny went to Pornhub.com. Yeah, it, it'll it'll have a little history. Okay, a little history there. But you know, I, I wanted to say something else about this device um, that I really think is really, really neat. It's, it's not just parental controls that this device does. This device also is a network level intrusion device. It protects the network as a whole and the traffic that goes in and out of it from viruses, malware, ransomware, and all that too. And it also intrusion protect, protection. All traffic on your home network goes in or out of that box, in or out. Huh. Everything gets filtered by that box. An easy setup and everything. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the application literally walks you step by step through it. Yeah, if you follow the instructions, they make it so easy. I mean, it was, when I set it up, it was, uh, it was an earlier version of the app. I've had it for about three years now. Yeah. But they walk you step by step with pictures <laughs> on how to do it. But, you know, uh, I'm available uh, to help with this. Um, and, and, and if you're totally intimidated by a device like this, it might not hurt to have me help you out initially with it. So say the name of the device you have once again, and then I want to talk just about how people can connect with you directly. The device is called Trend Micro Home Network Security. And it is a Trend Micro security appliance that they uh, market to, to home and residential users. Okay. Now, a parents listening to this show, one of the parents over on Parenting Teens That Struggle is like, yeah, okay, I need to talk to this guy. How can they find you, Ryan? Thank you, Aaron. So again, my name is Ryan Becker and I'm with High Tech Computing in Frisco, Texas. And I work a lot with residential clients. Uh, reach out to me, please. My business number is 
361-6659. My email address is Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at high tech, and it's spelled H-I-T-E-K, computing.com. And I'll be happy to help. This is a really important thing for parents to get a grasp of. And, and more often than not, there's way more often than not, uh, uh, it, it's, just, it's not a controlled matter in, in a home to the extent that it really should be. My guest today was Ryan Becker from High Tech Computing. You can find him at hightechcomputing.com and his email address is ryan, R-Y-A-N, at hightechcomputing.com. His phone number that he gave out on the show is 469-361-6659. Parents, one of the things that I understand about this subject is that if it's happening and you find out, multiply what you know by three, and that's generally what's really going on. And that's, that's hard. That's hard to swallow. That's hard to, to take as a parent, especially when it has to do with drugs, self-harm, or your child accessing pornography. But the internet is anarchy. It is the truest form. It is the most honest experiment of uncontrolled information and imagery. And our children have access to it. So if you're not going to control it, at least take ownership of the devices. And that's one of the things that Ryan talked about that I really have to appreciate. They have the privilege. Your children may have earned the privilege and the right to access the internet and use these types of devices, but they, they are not theirs. Not if you're paying for them. Not if you're still making the payments. Not if you're the one paying for the internet. And I have to say this because I say this to parents that I'm coaching all the time. If your child is accessing porn, if they're, God forbid, on the dark web, if they are dealing drugs on the internet, who's paying for that? Who is financially fueling their ability to do these things online. And if it's you because you're paying the bills, then take ownership of what's going on. You can get as angry as you want about what your child is doing online, or you can control it. So check it out. And like you parents, I am gonna go take a look at Trend Micro Home Network Security. I'm gonna Google that right after Ryan and I get off the air. I'm gonna contact them and make sure they know that this show took place and see if they'll give us a representative to take what Brian started talking about, about home security and protecting our children and going upward and onward. My name is Aaron Huey. I'm the host of Beyond Risk and Back, and I want to thank you for joining me on this show. I want to thank uh, uh, Your Cause Consulting for making sure that this show is in front of the right people and Deepin Productions for the production of this music and the producing of this show. Parents, take care of yourself first your adult relationship second, and your children third. Because that's how you're going to do your best work with your children. I'll see you next week.